please don't freak out and start googling them. When I first heard this number, I was shocked. There are three criteria and in order to be diagnosed, you need to have two of these three. 43 balls of pus was not a nice image to picture. I can help you out. I can help you out. I can help you out. Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Madison Don't and here on this channel I teach you how to understand your body so that you can become the healthiest version of you. Today we're going to be talking about the symptoms that may indicate that you have polycystic ovarian syndrome and the criteria that you need to meet in order to be diagnosed with PCOS. So if you're ready to get into it make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons below and let's get into it. So after one of my last videos talking about how my acne led me to getting diagnosed with PCOS OS, I had a bunch of you message me your symptoms and wonder if your acne and other symptoms could be a sign of PCOS too. Well, lucky it's not as simple as that, otherwise a lot more women would be walking around with PCOS and no one wants that. So let's first discuss the Rotterdam criteria that you need to meet in order to get diagnosed with PCOS. Now, there are three criteria and in order to be diagnosed, you need to have two of these three. So the first one is menstrual irregularities, such as lack of ovulation and or menstruation. And I will go into detail on all of these in a second, but the second criteria is polycystic ovaries. So you need to have multiple cysts, at least 10 cysts on each ovary at one time in order to be diagnosed with PCOS. So if you just have a few cysts on one ovary, then it doesn't count under the Rotterdam criteria as being a sign of PCOS. And the third one is a high level of androgens, also known as the male hormones that do not result from any other conditions. So let's first talk about the two that I personally experienced and had in order to get diagnosed with PCOS, which actually means that we're going to be discussing this list backwards. So the first and most obvious of the criteria for me to have noticed was the high level of androgens, also known as those male hormones. And this is probably very similar to most of you if you are watching the videos on my channel because I do talk about acne a lot and that is one of the symptoms but basically high androgens can be diagnosed either through clinical means so looking at the symptoms that you're experiencing or biochemically by looking at blood test results. So as mentioned androgens are the male hormones but men and women actually both need these in order to function at their best but the problem arises when women have too much. I actually talk about the important role of testosterone and how testosterone can cause acne in this video here and I also give you a few tips on actually how to lower your testosterone levels if they are too high but common symptoms of high testosterone levels include acne, thicker and faster growth of body hair, loss of hair from your head, skin more oily than normal, mood changes and weight gain. There are more but these are just the main ones and you can more accurately test your androgen levels by getting a blood test or a hormone saliva test. In fact my blood test results were actually what led my doctor to giving me an ultrasound referral because not only was I experiencing a lot of these symptoms but my blood test results actually came back saying that my DHEAS levels were high which I swear I've talked about a million times on my Instagram stories and on this YouTube channel particularly in this video here if you want more information on my story around that. But remember you must have two of the three criteria in order to be diagnosed with PCOS so even if you are experiencing all of these symptoms it doesn't necessarily mean you have PCOS unless you are experiencing one of the following as well and that's why my doctor sent me for an ultrasound. So in order to meet the ovarian cysts criteria remember that the Rotterdam criteria states that there needs to be at least 10 cysts on each ovary ovary at the same time and it's very rare that you would get 10 on one ovary and none on the other. Now I when I first heard this number I was shocked because I thought that was a huge number of cysts to have and recently I've learned that I have 43 in total and I have actually talked about that and my diagnosis conversation with my doctor in this video here if you haven't already seen it. Um, but I used to think that even a few cysts would qualify you for PCOS uh, but that's not actually the case. But something super important to note is that when you hear the term cysts you might actually think of like the breakouts on your face filled with pus and dead skin cells and gunk and just not very nice 
but technically the name of PCOS, so polycystic ovarian syndrome, should be changed because by definition, the things that are on your ovaries are not actually cysts, but are just underdeveloped follicles. So what happens with every woman at the beginning of her cycle when the ovary is making the egg is that multiple follicles begin to develop and then one follicle takes over as the dominant one and the rest just wither away. But with PCOS, the hormonal imbalance actually stalls ovulation and therefore stalls the formation of the follicles. So all the early stage follicles just pause where they are. So that means that the cysts that you see in the ultrasounds are really just follicles and they're not tumors, they're not cancerous, they're not cysts full of pus, which was great news considering that I had 43 of them and 43 balls of pus was not a nice image to picture, but they are just early stage follicles that were stalled. Now if you found this info helpful so far and you haven't already make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons below and also let me know down in the comments something that you've learnt so far that perhaps you didn't already know before the video. Okay so the third criteria that you could meet in order to be diagnosed with PCOS is an ovulation or lack of ovulation and other menstrual irregularities. So to be more specific, lack of ovulation is common in women with cycles greater than 35 days or less than 21 days. But if you've just come off the hormonal contraceptive pill, then this may not be a good indication for you because your hormones are still trying to figure themselves out. So an irregular period can be really nothing to worry about and just your hormones trying to work out their natural levels. Also do note that women who are getting their period may not necessarily be ovulating, which looking back now, that may actually have been the case for me because as I've just talked about, obviously I have the cysts, so my follicles have stalled and I'm not ovulating, yet I was still getting my period, so this wasn't necessarily one of the criteria that I jumped to straight away in getting diagnosed with PCOS. I mean, if you wanna get real technical, a measure of progesterone on day 21 of a 28 day cycle will let you know whether you have ovulated or not but that is very technical and it requires you to know what day you're on of your cycle and if you have an irregular period or you've just come off birth control that can be something that you don't really know. But this is why I've started measuring my temperatures to not just track my menstruation and my cycle, but to also see if I am ovulating. So if you wanna do this too, then just make sure that you get a thermometer that has two decimal places because the temperature fluctuations are quite small. And if you want a video with more detail on how to do this, then please do let me know down in the comments because that is a whole video topic on its own. Now, one more thing just quickly, PCOS is also associated with the hormone insulin that works in your digestive system to regulate hunger and metabolism. So I did also want to go through a few more signs and symptoms that if you are experiencing them, it may warrant you going and having a conversation with your doctor about getting tested for PCOS or at least metabolic syndrome. Now, if you are experiencing these signs and symptoms, please don't freak out and start Googling them. But some of you may be experiencing these and you don't don't know why so I'm just trying to open up that conversation between you and your doctor and help you put on that problem-solving hat. So some other indicators of PCOS or metabolic syndrome could include significant weight gain, fatigue, a lowered sex drive, if you're always hungry or craving high carb sugary foods, frequent or increased urination, and also tingling of the hands and feet. Now, hopefully you aren't experiencing any of these, but if you are, the first step is not to freak out and start Googling your symptoms, like I said, but just to book an appointment with your doctor and discuss what this may mean. If you want me to make more videos for you on PCOS, then make sure to hit that like and subscribe button below so that I know, and also let let me know down in the comments what your experience with PCOS is and any of these symptoms that you may be experiencing. Also make sure to go and follow me over on Instagram because that is where I keep you guys updated regularly on my acne and PCOS journey. But that is all from me for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video next week. I can help you out. I can help you out. I can